Welcome, Strategy Battle Gamers, to another GBHL YouTube video. You are here with your Roman reporter, Daniel Rabone, at the desolation of Cumberbatch. And today we are, yeah, indeed. And today we are joined by Mr. Kieran Street. Woo! How are you doing? I'm um, pretty good, thanks. Yep. How are you enjoying the desolation of Cumberbatch? I'm really having a good time, to be honest. Really having a good time? I'm really having a good time. <laughs> really, really. In our new surroundings at the new Slayer Games. Were you here at the uh, Mansfield event yes, last time? Yes, I was at the previous one. So, uh, how do you feel this place compares to the old venue? Certainly a lot better. There's a lot more space for moving around, um, a lot warmer. Um, and, but just the whole setup of the shop looks really nice. Oh, it's very, uh, it's a great setup we got here. So, having a good time. What did you bring with for you this time? You, as a man, Quite known, I think it's fair to say, for loving the theme. Yes, I'm start, starting to get that reputation for being the theme guy. And choosing the theme armies at all costs. At all costs, and that's certainly the case for this tournament. So what did you bring? For this tournament, I brought the White Council. The White Council, all here army? All here army, all on foot. Mounted, I presume? No, all on foot. All on foot. <laughs> And there it is, and as I, as we hopefully put across in other videos, it's a thousand point tournament, and that is not a lot of models. That's seven models. And seven mirror. models. So, do you mind um, slightly pivoting the ones on the end to face me? There we go. So, talk us through who you've got there. That's right, great. so going on uh, my left to right, we've got Glorfindel, Lord of the Rest. Yep. Uh, who comes with the armor of Gondolin, making mm -hmm. him resistant to magic. Cool. Uh, he's also fight value seven, highest fight value in the army. You've got Arwen Evenstar, who sure. is uh, obviously Arwen's daughter. It's been around a bit. Yeah. Um, she comes with an Elven Blade, a ridiculously low defense of three, and... Um, her ideal for it all here on. <laughs> uh, but she does come with three wall points and the chance to channel Nature's Wrath. Cool. Then we've got Elrond. Mm -hmm. uh, again, he's really pretty cool. He's got threes in the right places, comes with an Elven Blade and heavy armor, uh, giving this defense of seven. Cool. Oh, and also his uh, magic ring lets him reroll fate points. <laughs> yeah, magic ring. We've got Galadriel in her wizard form. Um, she Unarmed has defense three. <laughs> Unarmed defense three, but the plus side is that she comes with three rerollable fate points, has got a free will point every turn for casting magic. Unlike any other wizard, it can't be broken, it's just a natural ability that cool. she's got. And um, yeah. She's actually probably been one of my best. Uh, well, she gives you the kind tenders. of blinding light, doesn't she? Yeah. But also, by taking her, you can take Galadriel's mirror. Galadriel's mirror. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen this at a tournament. No, I've not seen it either. This is the first time I've seen anyone use it. So, for anyone who's not familiar with it, what does the mirror do? Um, you start the game. Wherever you deploy Galadriel, you put the mirror within six inches of her. We're a little bit unsure on what happens if Gladwell has to walk on the board. The way we've been doing it in those matches is that we just count it as after her first move, you can put it within six inches of her. Uh, Kellerborn presumably is carrying it around for her until... Yeah, it's on the back of their truck. Once it's put on the board, it can't be moved. Um, as far as we know, it can't be damaged, destroyed, moved, done anything with by the enemy. And from that point, at the end of one of your turns, a hero within range that's a six inch range of that, can regenerate all of their spent fate points. That's pretty cool. Mm. But, of course, it's kind of like the Charles Campfire thing, that it requires you to stay yeah. completely within. It's, it's great if you don't have to move anywhere, but in most of these scenarios you don't have that luxury. I think it's been most useful in domination so far. Could be incredibly helpful to you in the final around. game of high ground. Yeah, Deploy on the hill. Well, Stick it on the hill. Yeah, it's, I'm not going to have to move much in that one. Uh, next game, of course, is Reconoita, whereas I don't think I'll be using it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Although, okay, but uh, kind of cool too. So what, what, what actually made you bring it? I'm guessing you didn't bring it because it was incredible in the game. Ever since the films have come out, I've wanted to use the White Council. Yeah. I've just wanted to take a thousand points of the White Council heroes and see how they could do. Yeah. Um, I'm not actually that practiced with all hero armies uh, The only other go at all hero that I've had was at um, Huddersfield and I took the three hunters. Oh yeah. Because they came to exactly 400 points and all the guys and given me wood equipment. Um, despite the fact that I'm currently in dead last, having no victories and scored barely any victory points, <laughs> I am really enjoying this army. Which is the point. It's something really fun to use. There's always something spectacular that happens in a game. Uh, in one game, Glorfindel on the final turn used all of his might in one go and ended up killing like four enemy warriors, um, just which he needed sixes to wound as well. Um, 
bar went. The funniest moment we've had so far was um, against uh, Tom Macklin. Brought a guy. Um, Galadriel was charged by Aragorn, who up until that point she'd been immobilising every turn of the game. Arwen counter-charged Aragorn, leaving Galadriel to fight a guard at the Phantom Court. And Arwen beat Aragorn in a fight nice. with a single dice. <laughs> Is that because presumably Aragorn is somewhat under the thumb? I, I, yeah, I think that was just Arwen running up to him, just slapping him in the face, yeah. saying, "What are you doing?" It's just he's letting her have it because otherwise we'll never hear the end of it when we get home. Uh, so so we only got halfway through your army. Yep. Uh, continuing on, we've yep. got Kelleborn. Kelleborn, cool. It's the only model who comes with a shield, which has been invaluable uh, because it means when he, when one part of the army is overwhelmed, he can just use his shield to ensure that he wins that fight. Sure. And, uh, doesn't get overwhelmed. Uh, he comes with heavy armor as well, as well as a couple of spells, which are occasionally quite handy. Uh, what spells you got? Uh, he's got Aura of Command, which makes everyone within a certain distance of him um, pass their courage tests. Uh, but he also comes with Immobilize, and those work on a two and a three up. Immobilize, to my mind, being one of the best spells in the game. Yeah, certainly. Mm. Okay, so you've got Calibon, cool. We've then got Gandalf. Yep. Um, imagine quite a few people would be familiar with him with um, seeing him on the channel and things but uh, he's got a good range of spells uh, the one that I thought would be most important is strength and will because it gives him the ability to give other people will points back after they've expended their magic mm -hmm. but the problem is in order to use it you're kind of not doing anything with Gandalf that turn yeah. and it's um, yeah I don't know if you find this, um, I'm probably about to say so, but I find the same thing with Renew on Radagast. Yeah. Sounds like a really great spell, but normally Immobilize or Panic Steed is more useful. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, that's what I've been finding. Radagast is just tied up having to keep continuously heal people. Mm -hmm. And while that keeps them going, it means that I've got another model that's just standing there. So this is certainly the White Council. It's very much, it's important to note, I think, that they're just, it's not just they're not on horses. But it's not the normal White Council list you see. You would normally see the Saruman the White is very popular, Legolas would turn up in this sort of thing. And it seems that you've very much gone through what, just the models and the characters you like, I guess. From the... To my mind, um, I, I was given some advice to take Saruman instead of Gandalf, but um, Gandalf's always been my favourite, and I just uh, I didn't have a painted Saruman ready either. Um, I think I'd possibly change out Arwen for maybe Lindir, because to my mind, Lindir could be, as a counsellor to Elrond, maybe uh, it's a bit more justification being in there. He's kind of like White Council backroom stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, he brings in the tea, you know. <laughs> he does. As they do here, and it's something I love about this place, when they bring you the tea in the mug. It is fantastic. And you've got people going around asking if you're right for a drink, and you mm. say yes. Oh, yes. Need water. Um, but no, I've, I've just gone for a thematic force. Uh, I've not really been too fussed about winning. Uh, if you wanted to make this competitive, um, off the bat, you need to give Elrond, Glorfindel, and probably Gandalf a horse. Um, you probably swap out Kelleborn for Saruman, perhaps, but he is a fighter. It's just that you can't give him a horse. It's his handicap. I'd also consider getting rid of the mirror, because in a competitive environment, you can't rely on yeah. being able to hang back with it. And taking Galadriel, but in her other form. And the reason oh, for the that war is, aspect. The reason for that is for her minus one courage. Yeah. Um, because using an all-hero army, what you want to do in a lot of games is get the enemy to breaking point, get them one model away from breaking, and then once you've broken them, to kill as many as you can from that point onwards, and her ability will hopefully help them out the way. Yeah, if you get them one model away from breaking, then you essentially get two turns of slaughtering them. Yeah, and um, if you really wanted full competitive as well, I'm guessing that you put him on his uh, sleigh, where he becomes... Yeah, Alist attack. Alistair's got him on their side, where um, he can... I think he's, he can generate the most attack dice in the entire game. Yeah. As he can, um, on knockdown, he gets 12 if he's got Sebastian. I don't think there's anything else that can roll 12 dice to wound, which is kind of spectacular. Yeah. For a rabbit slay. So you mentioned um, four, four losses, but um, four good games? Had good games, good opponents? Good games. Um, yeah. Uh, first up, I was against the um, one of the Goblin Horde armies. There's three fairly similar Goblin styled armies here. Um, and that was literally a holding action. I had a house, a Rohan house, to the back of these guys that was blocking a lot of access. And they were just trying to hold a little ring uh, for as long as possible. The thing that handicapped me was the presence of a shade, as oh. it meant that every time I rolled a six, Sam it was just a five. Yeah. Uh, no, that was uh, oh, James, James Bond. Bond. Yeah. And uh, 
but no, he knew what he was doing. Uh, he was using Drezat to enrage wards and things, and well, I held that for quite a while. It just wasn't enough. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, in that game, I spent 45 fate points in total, 19 of which Glorfindel spent. <laughs> Uh, next game was against. I can't remember now. Uh, being distracted. What was my second game against? It would have been. Um, I can't remember the second game. The second game. Not half It was the uh, Eastern player. Uh, domination. Will. Yeah, Domination. Uh, Will. Yeah. That was uh, really quite close. It was on that, the lava board over there. And we've got some cool lava terrain going on over there. And uh, interestingly, we decided to count the river as a river. Uh, and okay. Swimming rules to you could swim through the lava. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, well, apparently you can't swim through lava because um, Will sent four of his Easterling cataphracts through and rolled straight ones for the first three nice. of them. As they just presumably melted. Well, that's fair enough. It is, after all, lava. And that was a, a really close game. Uh, I had Kelleborn, Glorfindel, and Elrond holding a bridge on one side against a horde of Easterlings. And I had Gandalf. Radagast, Galadriel somewhere in the middle, and Arwen holding the other side. But because I chose to channel Terrifying I I'd Aura <laughs> for those two, about one Easterling a turn was able to pass a courage test to charge no. them, so it was quite So that's 3d6. Mm. Oh, that's cool. It's because they had to roll three dice to get rid of the highest, yeah. and in that case would have passed, but, <laughs> you know... It, Good example, Kieran. There you go. There you go. It gets really hard to charge them with yeah. some others. Uh, third game was a cracking match against Tom Macklin. Uh, I really used the terrain there to block off the um, number of uh, opponents that could get in on me. So uh, even though Tom had quite a few uh, models like the Fountain Court and stuff, he just couldn't bring his numbers to bear. Um, and that was that was uh, quite close for most of the game. Uh, Boromir went, got knocked off his horse and immobilised really early in the game. And Celeborn, you know, hit him down, took a load of wounds off him. And then in classic... Boromir fashion, especially when I'm trying to kill him. He just got his shield up, knocked Kelleborn back, and started grinding his way forward. At the end of the game, Kelleborn was left in one wound with no fate. Boromir exactly the same, and uh, unfortunately the game ended before that duel got resolved. Because Boromir is a beast. An absolute beast. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth game was against uh, James's Isengard army. Uh, somewhat similar to your own, I believe. In that he's uh, James Baldwin. Saruman yep. and quite a few... It's very similar to mine, yeah. And... Uh, that was Lords of Battle, and I just found the overwhelming amount of strength four attacks were beating me down. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nature's Wrath was quite useful. I managed to take off quite, I think, about almost uh, half a dozen ferals in one hit. Oh, that's good. Um, but yeah, uh, I also had to spend three might points and four will points from Gandalf to Sorceress Blast Greamer out of the game. <laughs> yeah, so Greamer, Greamer isn't doing very well at these games when there's so many wizards about just blasting him all the time. Mm. Poor little guy. He just wants to have a word in your ear. Cool, but another good fun game, yeah? Yeah. And uh, I believe next up I'll be taking on Thorin's company, Mounted on Ponies, oh, in amazing. Reconnoiter. Uh, Mark Boylan's army. That's Mark Boylan's army, yeah. Absolutely. It's a Beautiful cracking conversions army. across the whole board. The entire company on Pony. I'm sure I'm hoping we'll get a video with them soon. Um, cool. Anything else you'd like to add or say to the book of viewers? Um, only to uh, support your Hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle game. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have not told you to comment, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Support your Hobbit hobby and... Happy Strategy Battle Gaming. Better.